Mr. Holbrook, how you doing, sir? Mr. Mike Johnson, I'm doing very well. And yourself? Not bad, thanks. Not bad. No rest for the wicked. How was Comic Con? Been a, it's been a couple whirlwind uh, type of days. Just I'm working in Chicago and flew from work to go be a part of that at Comic Con. And, and man, um, I, have, I can I can easily say I've never been a part of anything like that before. Well, and you've got some major projects coming up, but let's talk about Vengeance first, of course. Um, what I really enjoyed about this film is uh, writer director BJ Novak obviously didn't mm. want to pigeonhole things He didn't want to pigeonhole where the story might go or the genres that he uses And I saw recently you were talking about one of the greatest things about being an actor is trying new things never being pigeonholed You worked with BJ before on the premise Was that kind of need to try new things? Was that something that you guys kind of instantly created a kinship with? Yeah, I mean, after the the, the premise experience, um, I, I knew that BJ was a very uh, unique talent um, floating around in the ethos. But after the premise, um, it was just absolutely confirmed for me that this this guy is, um, is the real deal, and he knows exactly what he's doing. And so, uh, you know, the opportunity to 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 like you said, not stay in one lane. It's it, it keeps me young. You know, it's it's something that uh, it really motivates me and puts uh, just the right amount of pressure on me to to embody these characters and to get into the the, the psyche of these people and where and how they operate. Um, to me, that's just uh, a fascination that. I, I, I just love um, just going down the rabbit hole in search of. Do you need that within the character as well? Because I found that a lot of the characters you've, you've played are very steadfast and focused, whether they're villainous or, or, or altruistic. So would you rather the character as well sips from several cups? Well, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think that it's, 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 it's a danger that uh, a character is one note. Um, I always look for in the writing if it, if, if it has an array of sort of colors. Um, and so and, and if there's not, then how can I inject some humor into the character? I, I think that's probably why I won the uh, Logan audition is because, um, you know, there was a sense of humor that I could see in there. You know, in comedies, it's good to, for it to be a comedy. For a horror film, it's good for it to be a horror film, but for a film, Film is a is a reflection of life, and life is never one beat. It, it is it is sorrowful. It, it is um, ha you know it can be happy. It can be um, it can be funny. You know it can be many many things. I will say on that note, you probably gave one of the best line deliveries in Logan, when you know your forces the Reavers are shooting at uh, X twenty three, and you say God, shooting. She heals. She heals. That's probably one of the best <laughs> best lines in that movie. So, um, well, I ask you about that because Ty in this character, again, seems like he could have easily been one note, but the strength of the writing and your performance, yeah. there's a lot of hidden depths to him. Um, was that part of the appeal? And what did you try to bring to this role? I, um, on first read, um, I... Uh, I, I thought the character might be a little bit goofy or some character of uh, a, you know, a country hazy type of person. But really, as you start physicalizing this from a, from a, from a page to a you know, physicalization, you start understanding that, no, it's really just love and compassion that this person is operating from. And so he is oblivious to other things because he just has this one common goal of finding out what has happened to my sister because I don't believe the story that's been told to me. So that's the wonderful process of rehearsal and part of you know the transformation of all that and, and getting into someone else's headspace. Going back to talking about characters who sip from so many different glasses, the Corinthian, of course, being one of the upcoming characters that you're playing in Sandman, mm. um, seems exactly like that type of character. Can you tell us how fun it was to create that character for the screen and, and to play him? Yeah, well, the Corinthian 
we only had the, the the doll's house to go from so he's only in one episode um i know there's some recent comics that have come out but for for me at the time i just only had that and um me and neil gaiman the wonderful alan heinberg david goyer uh we wanted to create a character that was not this abrasive um serial killer running amok but he was this person who would you would welcome into your home through his sophistication and uh, elegance and uh, to put you at ease so therefore he could he could dine in the dreaming world he is the ultimate creation of your worst nightmare but in the the waking world he is the the patron of saints uh, to the group of ser serial killers that he is inspiring uh, and it's just a mad world um, that I think everybody can relate to because we all dream, we all live waking life, and it's this duality of consciousness that we deal with. Well, Boyd, I hope you get some rest, but I'm looking forward to seeing you in Justified. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Indiana Jones 5. you got a lot of massive things out there, so can't wait. But take a nap, my friend, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate the support. Talk to you soon. Hey, Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also, click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there, and you can become part of my Patreon team.